Do you spend tons of time manually creating mockup images in Photoshop? You can automate the creation of your mockups using the Batch Replace Smart Objects plugin. So we're going to start off by just showing you the basic operation setup. Photoshop document to use, that's obviously just going to be your mockup template. We'll start with this one here. Input folder to use, that's going to be your folder of artwork images. Here we have two different folders. We'll start with this one. Select folder. And then the output folder to use. We're just going to come here, final mockup images, select folder. And that's it. You just click run this now. And as you can see down here, it's replacing the smart object, exporting the images, and it is just creating all of the mock-up images for us on autopilot. Hop back over here. Once it's done, it'll say this operation is finished. That's the basic operation setup. You can also save operations to run later, and you can also set up multi-step workflows that basically allows you to iterate through multiple different mock-up templates and automate the entire process from start to finish. We'll start with the saved operations real quick. So it basically just uses the information that you input up here, and you can just come down here, give it a name. We're just gonna say black framed canvas mock-ups. Click save. As long as your inputs are provided up here, pop over here to your batches tab, boom, saves the operation. So it saves the mockup uh, template, it saves the input folder, uh, basically just saves all of the settings that you input it up here. And so let's say you have a standard workflow, you know, you always use the, the one mockup for your new images, and, and you know that it's always gonna be the same standardized set of folders and all that stuff. You can just come here, click run batch, and boom, it's running the operation right now. Uh, just one button click. Real simple, real straightforward. The more powerful feature is going to be the ability to save multi-step workflows. This is where the time savings can really just become truly immense. So to set up a multi-step workflow, you need to create the new workflow. We're just gonna say canvas art mockups. And what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use nine different mockup templates here. We're gonna set up a nine step operation that'll just iterate through all these mockup templates and create all the mockup images with one single button click. So we're gonna set up this workflow. We'll start with the first step. Uh, we're just gonna go through each mockup template basically. So just go as if you're setting up one standard operation to automate the mockup creation. And then instead of doing run this now or save individually, you just come down here and you just save it as step one. So we're just gonna say black framed canvas, add, and you'll see that it pops up right here. Next, we're gonna go with our second mockup. We'll do the white framed canvas next. Uh, all this other stuff is the same, so we can just leave that. We're gonna say white framed canvas, add, and we'll set up the rest. I'll probably just fast forward through this so that we can just get to the action sooner. And there we have it. We have our nine step operation set up. So if you want, you can run this workflow directly right here after you set it up, or you can pop over to the workflows tab. And here is where all your saved workflows are gonna show up. Canvas art mockup, step one, it'll do the black frame canvas. Uh, all of our parameters, you know, Photoshop document, input folder, all the settings. Step two, white frame, step three, four, and so forth. And then from here, you can literally just come down, click run workflow, and it's just gonna do the entire process for you. As you can see, as it finishes one operation, it just automatically cycles to the next mockup template. Uh, you know, that's just kind of the logic of how the plugin is set up. It'll just go through, iterate through your images. Cool, that's done. Then it moves on to step four. Pop over here. We can see everything is getting created for us. Just fully automated. Step five, pop over to the room mockups. And everything is just humming along quite swimmingly. And that's it, quite literally just like that. Once the operation is set up and, and your workflow is here saved, you can just come here, click one button, and as you can see, it generated 135 mockups for us. Uh, if you have a larger input folder, like let's say instead of 15, if you have 75 images, you know, 75 times nine, that's, that's a lot of time you would spend if you're doing this manually. Just imagine coming through here manually one okay i created one image now i gotta go file export uh quick export save specify my settings say where i want to save it to that's just that's the process for one mock-up image now i gotta go through here yippee mock-up number two cool file export quick export it's really gonna take a lot of time to do this manually. And really the core goal of this plugin is to just save you as much time as possible by making it as easy as possible to automate this process. And if you need to move these images onto the next step in the workflow, maybe you're gonna upload these to an e-commerce store or whatever, everything is grouped here by file name. So you can just come in, uh, drag and drop, 
drop into the email, whatever it is you need to do with these images, you can just sort of pass this along to the next step in the workflow. And just like that, I mean, it just went through and automated all the mockup images for us. So we'll talk about a few more features here. One is the stretch images to fit smart object feature. Now this is something optional for each operation. If you know that your input images are gonna vary in size, like the dimensions, the aspect ratio, the resolution, if you know there's gonna be some variance there and you want all of them to still fit the mockups perfectly, then you can just have this checked and what'll happen is when it runs the operation, it'll just, there's just a quick little intermediate step where it just takes all of these images basically compares against the smart object and just resizes each of the images in your input folder to where it'll perfectly fit the smart object and that way you can just generate perfect looking mockups without having to do you know time consuming pre-processing steps of resizing all the images or whatever and it'll just automate that process for you as well if you try to replace the smart object contents with an image that doesn't perfectly fit the mockup that's what ends up happening so if you know there's going to be some variance in your images you're going to get mockups that just look jacked up we're going to see what the operation looks like uh using this image but with this selected just so you can see how this feature works as you can see here uh perfectly resized to fit the mock-up even though the initial image looked a little different so really that's the core advantage of having this checked and it's definitely the recommended smart default unless you just know for an absolute fact all my images, they're the same size, same aspect ratio, same resolution. Unless everything is just perfectly constant, it's recommended that you keep this checkbox selected. Another feature is the option to modify and customize the JPEG save quality for your operations. So especially if you're adding these images to an e-commerce store, maybe you know it's for a print-on-demand store, maybe you're sending them to a client, whatever it is. Uh, this allows you to basically automatically compress the images as you're exporting them. So if you want lower file sizes, you know, you can tilt this towards the lower end of the scale. If you're just going for absolute maximum highest quality, then you can keep this higher. Really, there's a bit of a trade-off because if you go super low, okay, your file size will be small, but then uh, what will end up happening is the images won't look very great because there's a lot of compression applied. If you go too high, sure, you'll have excellent images, but uh, then the file size is going to be gigantic. Really, the best way to find what works best for your specific workflow is just play around with it, test a couple settings, and just see what works best for your needs. And then when you're running operations, when you're saving operations, whatever parameters you set up for both the image quality and also the stretch images, for each individual operation, it saves that separately so that uh, it'll basically allow you to dictate what settings you want to apply to each operation. Now we're going to answer a few more questions that often come up. Uh, one is in terms of the, the technical side of how the plugin works and handles certain situations. So first and foremost, every feature you'll see has a little checkbox next to it where you can just kind of click this, a little pop-up will come and this will supply you with current updated information about how the feature works and stuff like that. So if you have any questions, you can often just come here and, and you'll find that your questions are answered. Photoshop document to use, this is gonna be a PSD file type. Input folder to use, currently there are four accepted file types, PNG, JPEG, JPG, and then AI, which is the Adobe Illustrator file type. Uh, these are the most commonly used ones. So far, we haven't heard any complaints or requests for more. Uh, this is something where we might expand the file types that we support, just if there's user demand for it, but uh, so far everyone seems pretty happy with these options, so these are the accepted input file types. PNG file types specifically, so let's say your input images, there's some sort of transparency and you want the transparency preserved during the operations. As long as it's a PNG file type, the plugin will preserve the transparency that exists in those images. Output folder to use, so currently we only support the JPEG export file type, and that's because because that's basically what everybody uses. Uh, we've had a couple requests here and there for a couple file types. PNG, a few people have requested that. Uh, for the time being, it's just JPEG, but this is just as of this recording. Uh, this is something where in the future, it's likely that we're gonna add some additional file types just based upon demand. So if you have any requests, uh, you can email our support team and uh, just tell us uh, what you use as part of your workflow. And if we get a lot of requests for a certain file type, it's likely that we'll add the support for it. So a couple more technical questions you might have is just, how does the plugin know what to do? 
uh, in terms of like, how does it understand what it's doing, what layers to act upon, uh, how do my mockup files need to be set up and stuff like that. Uh, that's what we're going to talk about here. So it kind of depends on how your mockup file is set up. Let's say it's a simplified file like this, where there's just one single smart object in the document. If the plugin detects, hey, there's only just one smart object in the document, it's going to assume that's the one that you want the replacement to take place on, and it'll just automatically perform it on that smart object layer. It doesn't need to be selected. It doesn't need, it doesn't need to be the active layer in the document. If there's just one smart object, uh, the plugin just intelligently assumes, hey, that's what it wants you to do. If your document has multiple smart objects, that's where it gets a little trickier. A lot of mockup files that you'll download online, they'll be super complicated. There's, you know, a bunch of uh, different options inside of here. This is just sort of a simplified one that has multiple smart objects just to show you how it works. So if you have more than one smart object layer, really just to get it to act upon that layer, all you have to do is make sure that the target smart object layer is the one that's selected and active in the layer stack. If we had both of them selected like this, the plugin would not know what to do. If we had none of them selected, again, the plugin would not know what to do. So all you got to do is just make sure this is the active layer in the documents, and then it'll understand, hey, this is selected, that's the one that he wants me to perform the operation on, excellent, and it'll just use that layer. If you try to run an operation where uh, the plugin doesn't know what smart object to use, it'll throw an error message and it'll just let you know, hey, there's a problem here, and uh, you need to fix this so that we understand what you want us to do. So we're saying we want to use this mockup here, two smart objects are selected, so what's going to happen? It says multiple smart objects selected. Please select only the smart object you'd like to run the batch replacement operation on. So we'll say, okay. Now we wanna just do this one. Then it says, cool, that's what he wants us to do and that's what it does. Similarly, if you have a, a mockup like this where there are multiple smart objects but none of them are selected and you try to run the operation, it says, hey, there are multiple smart objects but none are selected. Basically, let us know which one you want us to run the batch replacement operation on by selecting it as the active layer in the document. It's a minor thing, but I'm telling you, if you're running a nine step operation and it fails on one of the steps and you have to go back and do it again, it should just make sure your documents are saved in a state where if there are multiple smart objects, uh, the target layer is selected. Another question you might have is in terms of saving batches or workflows, is there any limit on the number of steps you can save, or the number of workflows you can save, or the number of batches you can save? Uh, the simple answer is no, there's no limit. Uh, if you have a 1014 step operation, you can set it up and save it. There's, there's no limit of any kind inside of the plugin, uh, so you can just set up as many operations as you need in here. And then a couple bonus tips to just get the plugin to run faster. Uh, one thing that can help with this is just reducing the size of your PSD documents. Uh, a lot of mockup templates where when you first download it off a website like Creative Market or the Etsy Market or wherever you get your mockups, a lot of the mockup files will be gigantic. Like if you check the size, it'll just be this enormous gigantic file and there's, you know, 15,000 layers in the stack. Uh, a lot of the times you can just simplify the mockup template for your needs to where you can condense a lot of layers. Like these original mockups, you could, you, you know, there were 14,000 layers in here. You could customize the color of the newspapers and move the plant and decide what you want to do with the lamp and all this stuff. And a lot of the stuff is irrelevant. You just set up the scene to how you want it. And then what you can do is just select all the layers in the stack, uh, merge the layers and just set it up so that it's a, it's a much more lightweight, smaller file size. And that basically makes it so when you're running these operations, it'll just run faster because you're working with uh, and saving and doing read write operations on smaller files. So it'll just run a lot faster if you simplify your mockup template. For the most part, with most mockups, uh, you're gonna need just one smart object layer, whatever overlay texture layers there might be to make it look more realistic. And then oftentimes there's gonna be a background scene layer. Really, you can simplify a lot of your mockups to where all this underneath stuff is merged, all of the on top stuff is merged, and it's just background, texture, overlay stuff, and then smart object layer. And then the other thing is just the size of the canvas. A lot of the original mockups, you know, you'll get these gigantic 4,000 by 4,000 files, but if the images that you're sending to clients or uploading to your store or whatever only need to be 1,000 by 1,000, you might be able to just take the mockup, resize the entire mockup template itself to where it's sized to how you need it to be. And then again, you're working with a much more lightweight file to where the operations will just run a lot faster in Photoshop. Another question you might have is pricing in terms of cost. What does this plugin cost to use. So this is available on the Adobe Exchange and this is a subscription based plugin. Currently we are charging $10 a month. You can find all the technical information here. Uh, this is going to be kept current and up to date. So if you're looking for any updates about file type support or whatever it might be, that's where you're going to find this information. 
Uh, and you can always contact support if you have any questions and we're pretty quick to respond and help people out. As you can see in the reviews section, uh, most people are actually pretty happy with the plugin. This guy said, amazing, God tier level add-on, uh, saves a lot of time, awesome, awesome, amazing. The plugin works, it's user friendly. And on top of that, we also guarantee the plugin. So if you're dissatisfied for any reason, no problem, reach out to us. Uh, we'll provide you with the refunds. And we also are offering a free trial. So you can just try it out free for one month. If you're concerned, hey, maybe it doesn't work, uh, maybe it's not gonna work right for my mockups, you can test it out, you can use this trial code, and you can find out if it's right for you. And then in terms of the install process, like how do you actually get it added to Photoshop, uh, all of that is handled automatically by Adobe. You just come here, once you buy the plugin, the install will happen automatically through your Creative Cloud application, and it'll just add it to Photoshop for you. Uh, there's gonna be a plugin section here where you can come in, uh, manage your plugins. You can also go into your Creative Cloud application. There's a plugin section there where you can manage stuff as well. Uh, it's important to point out that you do need to have an active Photoshop subscription to install and use this plugin. It doesn't work on pirated Photoshops. There is currently no option to manually install it uh, because the install does happen through the Creative Cloud application. Super simple though, you just come here, buy the plugin, and it'll just install it automatically for you. And before you go, we're gonna run one last operation, this time with 75 images in the input folder. We're gonna do it for nine different mockups. We're gonna speed this up so you can just see one last time how this plugin can really just save you a ton of time on your workflow. And just like that, we created 675 mock-up images, quite literally by just clicking one button. As you can see, the time savings that this plugin can provide you with are truly gigantic. If you spend a lot of time in Photoshop manually creating mock-up images, instead use the plugin, you can automate this process, free up tons of time to spend on more valuable, more interesting, frankly, more enjoyable activities. Uh, Cause if you were doing this manually one at a time, this would take you easily half the day. Instead, this plugin can just automate this process and do it all for you with one button click. If you have any questions, you can contact support. We'll help you out as quickly as possible. There's also really no risk or downside because if you're not happy with the plugin, you can just email us and we'll process a refund for you. Anyway, thank you guys for watching and I hope you found this helpful.